It's been all oval racing for NASCAR's Camping World Series East drivers this year. That's until now, as the circuit pitches its 10 at Watkins Glen International for the first time since 2004. The world's fastest camping trip is next on Speed. We walk it into the Glen in the East 125 in NASCAR's Camping World Series, Watkins Glen International Speedway. Mike Hogwood here along with Bill Parsons, and Bill's going to be interesting to see in this series. The guys know how to turn right a little bit. Exactly. Somebody like Ricky Carmichael barely used to four wheels, now he's got to turn left and right. Third member of our broadcast team today is Derek Parasiglio. Let's head down to him down on the pit lane. You know, guys, whenever the NASCAR Sprint Cup Series comes to the Watkins Glen International Raceway, they always talk about the road course ringers, the guys that are the hired guns that come race the road course races. Well, the NASCAR Camping World E-Series also has its version of road course ringers as well. Guys like Peyton Sellers, who has run the 24 Hours of Daytona, Mark Davis, who has a NASA Road Course Late Model Series Championship, and Max Dumeray, who's the youngest winner of the 24 Hours of Zolder. So even though they're regulars in the series, they also know how to make rights as well as lefts. Bill, one thing they might have to deal with today is the weather. We've already had a few raindrops here. Not going to be easy. Yeah, they're going to have to get this track dry. No shredded tires for the Camping World East series. And You know, we're talking about the specialists there. Look at, there's our Camping World East point standing. Austin Dillon up by 19 over Brian Eichler, a two-time winner this year. On the pole for this race from Mexico City, Antonio Perez is with Derek. Antonio Perez starts on the pole today. You were faster than everyone else in qualifying. What's it take to put a fast lap down here at that Watkins Glen? It really feels pretty good, and right now we are just thinking on the race. It's a long way, 51 laps, so we have to keep the, the car for the last laps. What's your strategy starting from the pole? Is it to hold everyone off, or is it to just charge right from the beginning? Save the car as much as possible to the end and see what it's going to do everybody, and I think... If you want to win this race, you have to be on the top all the time. So we are going to be there, and we are going to be fighting to the end. Good luck today. Antonio Perez is on the pole. Matt Bobolox outside. Perez, a tremendous athlete. He is known in Mexico not as a race car driver, but as a professional soccer player trying to change sports. He is a tremendous soccer player. How about that? And we also have Steve Park. A former Winston Cup winner at Watkins Glen, starting up in the top five. And there you see back through the field, Austin Dillon, 21st points leader. Long way to go from back there. Yeah, but for a guy like Austin, you, you race like this, you're just out trying to figure out the track for a while. You really are, and he also did the, the Bondurant School, and they also stopped this week on the way here at BIR and ran a little bit, so at least Austin's not completely in the dark. Well, as these cars begin to take their pace laps around this road course, we'll take a break. Racing's on the way. What is that? Junior. Junior. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. Here's another tough one. Who's that? <laughs> You've done this before, haven't you? First time this series has been here since 2004. What a unique racetrack, Phil. It really is. And so much history here, obviously, from the Formula One background. The Cup Series has raced at Watkins Glen since the 1986 season. See right now, this is a little short shoot before the left-hander, which is turn number 10. And then there'll be another little quick short shoot till turn number 11, which is the final quarter that leads on to the front straightaway. But uh, so much history here. As we talked earlier, it's been since 2004 since the Camping World East Series has been here. There's this little short shoot coming into this last right-hander, turn number 11, that leads on to the front straightaway. Yeah, the guy that won that race in 2004, Brad Layton, is not in this field. He was a tremendous road racer. Matt Kobolak has said before this race he feels it would be a, a, a real cap crowning moment in his career if he could win on a road course. Now you want to win at all the famous racetracks. You want to win at Daytona. If you run a series that runs at Daytona in Darlington and Charlotte, and this is the place for these guys to win. Green flag is out. A lot of room here. Tremendous jump. By Perez. By, by Perez, yeah. Matt Kobach is able to stay in the second spot. Look like he might lose second. That's turn number one. 
Now they're wide open right now, up to third gear for turn number two. That starts the S's. And they come up the hill. A little left-hander there. Now they're going to cross the bridge. And the traffic comes into the racetrack. And then turn number four, another right-hander. And then the long back straightaway down towards the inner loop. Where they can really build up some speed. And one of the reasons they put that little inner loop chicane in is... Too much to speed. Cut, yeah, to cut that speed down just a little bit. And now this is the... Uh, that's the inner loop, and now they're in the outer loop. And pretty much single file, which I think is smart. Just kind of feel your way around here. Yeah, as Perez said, this is a 51 lap race. You have to take care of your equipment. There's that, that little short shoe. Now the left-hander. Most guys will go down to third gear, if not second gear down there. Now when you see a Sprint Cup race here, they have cars that are specifically designed for this racetrack and for this type of racing. But because this is such a short season, and most of these guys are on a limited budget, a lot of times they have to take an oval car and kind of reconfigure it a little bit to run on this road course, and that's not easy. It's not easy, but they do have to run a, a square rear and house. They also will have to put the fuel filler on the opposite side because they go the wrong direction, basically, compared to an oval track. And they will try to move the weight around. They will, they will even out the weights. On an oval track, typically, we have a lot more weight on the left side. Here, that won't be the case. A right, pretty good battle right now. Max Bobo is able to stay with Perez. And you saw Max Dumere there a moment ago. He is driving for Mike Olsen, former champion in this series. Dumere out of Ghent, Belgium. And as you're Derek, tell us he is a road racing champion. There's Peyton Sellers right there. You see Peyton currently in the 10th spot. That's Andy Santer's number 44. The Seller Waste System to sponsor on board. There's and Brian Eichler, that black car we saw for just a moment already a two-time winner this year. And that sponsor on Peyton Sellers is not a sponsor that's going to be on there all year, but Casella, Casella Way System is big up in this part of the country. So in the races up in the northeast, a lot of them, they'll be on the side of that 44. There's Eddie McDonald in that 71. I don't care what track it's on. McDonald seems to be able to run well. Had a great top five run our last time out at the South Boston Speedway. Antonio Perez doing a nice job early on in this race. Here we go, down, downhill, down to turn number one. Really easy to get wheel hop down here when you try to shift down to second gear. Ooh, Brian Eichler a little bit sideways there. You know, they really feel like two kind of uh, road racing driving styles. They're the guys that kind of muscle the car around, and then those two guys are just so smooth. Yeah, the finesse guys, and, and you could be successful with both. I remember going watching Ernie Irvin win a race at Watkins win a bush race that I was in, and he, he never got a wheel on a curve. And then you have people like Rusty Wallace that barely had his wheel, his tires on the racetrack. He was off the racetrack more, and he won a lot of road races. So it, you can have success more than one way. But every one of these drivers that we've talked to says this is fun racing. There's Antonio Perez, part-time on this series. Matt Colbuck staying right with him. There's the outer loop right there. That's, I'm sorry, that's turn number 11, the last corner that leads down the pit road in the front straightaway. Top three have opened up a little gap over the fourth place car right now. And in case you're wondering if there is a broadcasting position where you can see the entire racetrack, the answer to that is no. It's there right is not a monitor. <laughs> exactly. And we'll let the cameras do the work here. Yes. That's why you oftentimes will have more than one spotter at this race, but if you want to position a spotter over in this area in the S's, and you also want a spotter over it by turn number 10, turn number 11, the last two corners before the front straight away. Matt Koval has pulled out a little bit there, like he might want to get a little racy, but right here in this inner loop, I want to make the pass there, but Kovalak, who the, there is another road race on the schedule, that is at Lime Rock, and Kovalak won that race at Lime Rock a year ago. That was the only road race on the East schedule. Now there are two. Yeah, I'm glad to see these guys come back to Watkins Glen. Terrific racetrack, great area of the country, the Finger Lake region of New York. I don't think Matt Kovalak's thinking anything about scenery right now. The only scenery he sees is that number 12 car, Perez. And this is a great place for fans to come. They come, and you can see them in the background there. They, they camp out. They kind of pick their spot. You don't necessarily 
have to be in a grandstand somewhere to see this race. It looked like Koblock was going to peek a look to the inside there, try to maybe outbreak Perez, but didn't quite happen. Good run early on for Jeffrey Earnhardt in the Dale Earnhardt Foundation Chevrolet. Uh, he's in the top five here. Started seventh, so he's made his way up a couple of positions since the start of the race. Ricky Carmichael, that four car right behind him. You know, he's obviously the success he's had on two wheels. He, he turned right and left on two wheels, didn't he? He did. I, I've been amazed at his adjustment to stock cars. It's been incredible. You can see right there running six in the Monster Energy Drink Chevrolet out of the Kenny Schrader stable. He started ninth, so he's made his way up a couple of positions here early in the race. It's called the East at the Glen 125 at Watkins Glen International Speedway. And our pole sitter, Antonio Perez, is still out on top.